Uh, great to have you today. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, a little bit of intro, my introduction. I'm uh, Isaac, uh, Unity student at Basta based in Kenya. And, um, you know, I have been uh, helping, you know, some to, to build the Unity user group around Kenya and uh, here in Nairobi. So, yeah. Just a brief introduction about me. And uh, I think uh, back to you, Kangendra, we can get started now. Uh, you can share yeah. uh, what you have and we can, you know, get to learn more about Barracuda tools. Mm -hmm. I'm really, really curious to know more about what is Barracuda, what's the application mm -hmm. of that, what benefits will developer mm -hmm. have, uh, the mm -hmm. workflows and experience of using Barracuda when it comes to mm -hmm. AI stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. How can, you know, there's, there's, a, there's some questions that uh, people have been asking me mm -hmm. what they, they can do with Barracuda, especially when it comes to having their own models and how they mm -hmm. can, you know, have to execute their own models with the Barracuda tools, in which I really don't have that experience with Barracuda, and I'm really okay. curious to know and learn some bit uh -huh. about Barracuda. Yeah, back to you, sure. Kumar, and let's get started. Sure, okay. So I think uh, we have quite a few students, and I think uh, a lot of you are experienced with Unity, and if you have, like, I guess all of you are playing games, and if you have been, Apart from multiplayer games, even in multiplayer games, there are bots. And traditionally, the bots used to be have like only one kind of behavior. That is scripted behavior. Like the bots will do what it is programmed to do. It has no goals. It is a purpose. It has a purposeless life. Purposeless life. Uh, sorry, purposeless life. Right. Uh, similar thing. Like if a person is there who is living on to this planet Earth. And he has nothing to do. What will happen to that part? But if you keep on viewing a person or looking at the person who has no purpose, what will happen? You will get bored. You will get so bored that uh, nothing is happening. Let's go. Right. And that happens whenever you have an enemy in a game, you have an enemy in the view, but you are not in the target region so that the enemy will try to attack you. You are still, you can look into it, but you are not in that region so that the enemy will sense that and will come to attack you. Well, uh, while that purpose, like when it is there, if it is non, uh, like the purpose is not defined, it might have two to three kind of behavior. One, stand still and be idle. Second, move on, on a circle or walk to and fro. That's it. Like guard or moving in circles, right? Or if you have an animation of that sort, you can just uh, sit beside the fire and all. It won't have any alternate goals. Now that was used to be the behavior of artificial intelligence or scripted bots or AI, AI, basically the AI in games. But that has changed a bit with Doom and uh, a few more games. I'm forgetting the names right now because I'm, very, I'm a bit nervous actually. So I'm forgetting the names. So with that, that started with goal-oriented artificial intelligence, that the AI will also have a goal and the player is also having a goal. For example, if you are trying to cross a bridge, which was supposed to be guarded by the bots, and if it is the if the bots are being spawned and you are not in that uh, sensing area, the bot have a goal to break the bridge so that you can't cross over. It is not gonna go ahead and keep on roaming here and there. It is not a scripted behavior. You can still go ahead and fight it, but the bot will try to complete its purpose instead of chasing you here and there. So that is a smart behavior and that introduces a sense of complexity to the player as well as sense of complexity to the uh, in the game and sense of realness instead of feeling like, okay, it's a bot. It is just constantly trying to cheat us. Well, it can give you a sense of feeling, sense of emotion in the game. Although it's false, but it is there. And although, uh, whenever you feel like there is an AI in a game, the best way to int introduce an AI is to let the player cheat. Because AI is not there to help you lose the game. AI is there to help you win the game. So that you complete the game or else the game won't sell. Right, Isaac? Uh, yeah, right. That's really amazing, cool technique. Yes. Yeah. 
Now, these were the basic artificial intelligence techniques that used to be there. Now, all this goal driven and scripted behavior that used to be done by like, okay, writing down some ground rules, writing down some behaviors, writing down some uh, uh, set of instructions that will drive the bot when it is playing or when it is working around the game, right? Now, after that, Unity introduced a package that was Unity ML Agents, yes? Now, with that ML yeah. Agents, what, what started happening is like, we wanted to create tools but that was not more, much more flexible enough. It, it had a brain, it had an interface, it, has a, it had a training module. It used to work, but a lot of people not, uh, were not confident about working with c or working with Python and TensorFlow. They wanted an independent workflow out of Unity so that they can train their model outside and they can utilize it inside Unity, right? Basically, they did not want a training or simulation system inside Unity. They just wanted an inference system, like bring a model, get the inference, and get it ready. Similar to as an experience that people develop for web-based applications or, uh, or mobile-based application, where you don't train an artificial intelligence system through the web. You don't train an artificial intelligence systems in a mobile. Why should you do the same for a game? Why you should train an AI in the game for the game? So you, the Barracuda tools gives you the flexibility to go outside and train your model as you wish and bring it to the Unity and use it for whatever purpose you want. It can be, instead of like Unity ML Agents was used to be heavily relied on uh, reinforcement learning. That is creating a reward-based learning systems. Instead of having a CNN layer, and it was more on a reward-based system. Now, reward-based system is good for having in simulations, but if I want to create a classifier, if I want to create an industry application or an enterprise application using artificial intelligence with ML agents, well, it might be possible in one way or another, but it's not readily available. It's not straight away. Now, in order to solve these problems, we uh, Unity came up with one solution that is taking your own model, using it in uh, Unity as a model file, directly as a model file. That is one of the benefit of Unity Barracuda and it also gives you an upper hand like if you are not a computer scientist and your, com your computer scientist or art art AI expert is not, in uh, is not experienced with Unity, he will have a very hard time working with Unity ML agents in order to uh, train the system. Now, in order to solve that issue, you can ask the, uh, the engineer to work on its own as a separate, give you the model file and you can integrate it in Unity directly. That improvises the pipeline, that reduces the workflow for artificial intelligence pipeline because a lot of artificial intelligence people or a lot of uh, like data scientists and ML engineers are usually from the maths background, not from core game development background. Anyone over here uh, who is not from game development background and is more of a like AI person? Anyone? Okay, we have one person like that. Uh, I, I don't know uh, unless you unless somebody says something about that because yeah, I've been actually working with uh, some stuff with AI, but not dealing with game. But uh, that was some few years back. Uh, mm -hmm. dealing with uh, cognitive AI, yes. but uh, currently I'm trying, I'm in the process of learning more about machine learning agents. I'm mm -hmm. also trying to use it at my personal school projects. So mm -hmm. that's what currently I'm doing. So I'm learning more and uh, getting to experience more about Unity mm -hmm. machine learning agents and applications mm -hmm. to various kind of my project mm -hmm. where I can use it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, if you like, uh, since Isaac, you are learning about uh, machine learning, you might have, uh, know, you might be knowing now that machine learning has three types of learning processes. One is supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement, right? Yeah. Unity yeah. ML agents relies focus, uh, like relies heavily on reinforcement learning instead of learn, uh, relying on any any other tools. That is, uh, yeah, yeah, right, exactly. That is yeah, that's, supervised that's learning and uns unsupervised learning. Now, yeah. If we have to go for a clustering job, or if we have to go for a classification job, or let's say, let's take an example of uh, augmented reality, right? Mm -hmm. If I have to get a person's, uh, if I have to recognize a person, or if I have to recognize a plane surface, 
that is a classification job right exactly now how will i create a engine with uh, how will i create a system with um, you can say ml agents to classify well, it, whether it relies heavily on reinforcement so it gets really messy yeah, with ml agents exactly. yeah it gets really messy with ml agents whereas if we use normal supervised learning where we just have we just have to feed in some sample images saying okay this type of structure if you are getting this kind of planar activity if you are getting it's a plane and if you are not getting something like that if it's a round surface it's not a plane right yeah exactly so it becomes it becomes really easy for us to train on a supervised learning and if we can use it if we can bring that model to in, inside unity in order to find out okay if i want to extract a texture from a plane surface right the barracuda yeah. tool can help us to det detect whether it's a plane or not and once it detects that we can draw a contour like we can draw a boundary on that take a snap of it and convert it as a texture if we have lidar sensors on it we can convert normal map we can convert a detail mask and speculo map from that same image if you have all the sensors included in the can in the camera obviously right so the yep. workflow is pretty unique and the barracuda tools opens your window to work with enterprise applications mostly and if you want to use any kind of intelligence like not relying on reinforcement learning and relying heavily on supervised unsupervised learnings you can do that now now anyone having issues in understanding these terms uh, supervised learning unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning can ask me right now at this point <laughs> so right now if you look into this okay i have a lots of files open over here so whenever i have to work on any barracuda i will have to create a barracuda worker okay so over here i am creating a barracuda worker that is basically this barracuda worker this is a function and i will be using this barracuda worker method so basically this is a supporting file for me i will be using this file inside my test file so i will just using it i am just creating it as a method for barracuda worker now this is the model which i'll be using this is nn model type of model now for this one you will be using unity barracuda this is required in order to utilize this package now nn model is a part of barracuda model and you can have it as a variable and i am creating a worker factory now i am just creating a worker factory of type pre compiled and i am just giving the model verbose is basically allowing you to debug the layers whether it whether you want to see everything what is going on or you don't want to see anything that is going on that is the worker factory before using the worker factory you should be using a model loader which will load the model now worker factory will basically work uh, does the inference job worker factory will do the inference job whatever you are trying to do after computing everything after it gives you the computation uh, sorry computing everything you should dispose the model and its worker once you are done with it you should reduce we should uh, you should release it from the library it does not uh, go with the automatic garbage collector that is there it does not go with that so you should be manually destroying it once you are done with that now after that well you can have a peek out uh, basically execute it basically worker dot execute it will be an asynchronous task in order to compute because it will be running on a separate thread because inference is process intensive and if you are running it on the same thread it will affect your frame rates and it will affect the user performance so you should always run it on a separate thread the basic um, inference job and once it is done you can have a look into the output with this worker dot output method which you are generating right now once it is done you can either show uh, save the results into something that is this output will be a tensor file uh, i think tensor file is basically hi, hi, a matrix yeah hello um i think you are sharing the wrong screen we are looking at uh, unity the unity ui okay okay oh, wait, no, wait, no, wait, no, no. you are sharing visual studio yes oh, um currently. i i was seeing visual studio yeah. yes i'm seeing the code oh yeah, yeah. thanks now okay, okay. I th should i redo it should i redo it i just start from the from yeah Okay. Yeah, just go. Okay. So 
basically uh, in order to ut utilize barracuda i am using unity barracuda as a using unity extension you can use this as like similar to unity using uh, using unity ui or uh, ai system well you can utilize barracuda package import it once it is imported you will have to create a barracuda worker in order to utilize it now the barracuda worker will require two to uh, two to three things now barracuda it is not required that you should create a, a method well i am using it for my own purpose you can declare a barracuda worker as you as you like now it will you can create a model which it will require a model a onx model and a worker factory type which kind of type uh, which type you want to use it now verbose is again optional whether you want to see uh, what the inference engine is doing now in order to load the model you can use uh, model loader dot load and pass in the model name in order to load the model after this you should be creating a worker factory to create a worker of which type this will be basically worker factory dot type dot compute uh, compute pre compiled that you can use and then you will be able to load the model and the worker factory will also be ready once it is ready once it is ready you should be disposing it after completion of your work now this i enumerator task is basically doing uh, the texture extracting the texture job but what we are trying to do over here is we are trying to execute an asynchronous task of input uh, basically like trans uh, getting the texture as an input of a tensor this tensor the data that we are taking it as an input from the image texture or uh, pod texture we are taking it as a, a tensor file and then we are uh, running a asynchronous execution or inference from the worker in order to run it if it is not visible completely i can make it big yes it is running an asynchronous execution for the input in order to return the output now the output will again be a tensor matrix a tensor matrix uh, it's basically a matrix data or you can say a multi dimensional array in machine learning we do utilize it as a tensor because it is more efficient in terms of tensor that's why i use a tensor over there and it's from tensor flow it is coming from tensor flow terminology is coming from tensor flow and we can just use this or using the download method we can just use it uh, to convert the data into multi dimensional array in, in some, and from the tensor and we can utilize it for our input and output once it is done you can just go ahead and run the dispose method to dispose it this is what it is doing over here basically this is the shape and all that is there and barracuda test dot over here this is the basic file which we are using now if you look into this these are the labels that we are using so alarm clock and asparagus baseball bee broom carrier crocodile dolphin and phone these are the 10 classes which is running over my engine and this is barracuda worker which i am creating as a barracuda worker which is basically this script nothing more than that it is basically a script which i am running this script that you have barracuda worker i'm just calling this script over here in order to utilize the functions that i have created over there now over there i'm just running a barracuda worker function which is basically this function in order to create the model i'm using it i'm passing the model name and the worker type which is for me it's a public variable let me just go ahead and show it to you it's a public variable for me it's a serializable private variable over here it is a serialized variable i can just go ahead and select it and it will be done and once it is there it is destroying it on destroy and it is basically on updating texture it is doing it and it has nothing else to go for and just it is taking that result and then just parsing through the dictionary in order to show the largest element key value pair in order to just show the result very simple right taking the largest key value pair show the largest value as which has the largest uh, probability in order to show right hello yes yes i got it yes yes basically taking the largest value from the probabilities showing it as the output and show it as is, the output yes that is what it is and it's done this is very simple barracuda scripts just like you can see you can really literally count the lines number of lines which is there 100 lines in one file and i think 100 over here as well less than 100 so basically within uh, 150 lines of code right your inference engine is built on and you have a gui for your inference engine as well 
Now coming back to the unity screen. Now over there, I'm just having a quad, a very simple quad in order to run this system. Now I can just go ahead and focus it. This is the quad size for me. This is very small, right? But I'm just using pixel by pixel and it has only 28 by 28 size. If you look into this, I'm just converting it to 28 by 28. And I have a very simple blank game object using which I'm just creating this. It has the results array, which is text and which is just running through this text method. And all the everything else that you can see over here, the result panel, the reset panel, the test panel, all these options is there. The result panel is basically the result that is there. So this is the uh, inference that you will be getting. And these are the classification, the classes data, what it will be classifying to. From one to nine, it has this much classification and the zeroth value will have the highest value. That will be the classification. Now, if I run it, I think my unit is helping me now. So if I run it again, it should be able to help me out pretty quickly. Yeah, right now it is helping me out. Thank you, my computer for helping me out right now. Now, if I try to draw anything, let me go ahead and draw again an alarm clock. I'm not sure why I'm always drawing an alarm clock. So if you look into this, this data is constantly changing. Even, um, even like this uh, red data is constantly changing. It is 99% sure it's an alarm clock. Let me try to create a dolphin. Is it a dolphin? Yes, it's a dolphin. I'm not sure how but it's a dolphin and you can see the B has the lowest percentage right now. The bottom is the B and if I reset it now, if I draw something like an ant and uh, well, right now it has the lowest percentage is the phone and B uh, where is the ant now? And is 64% is sure that it's, it's an ant. And now if I just draw the legs, it is 96% sure it's an ant. And if I go ahead and try to build a phone, well, it's a phone right now and well, you have all these values right now. Any questions so far? Uh, excuse me. Yes. In which part in the, in the code that the AI knows that mm -hmm. shape? Like when you draw a phone, mm -hmm. how does he know that's a phone? In which yes. part how phone? So, okay, so that exactly, that's the part where, how does it recognize it? Is it a phone or it's a, a B, yeah. right? Yes. So that is the job of artificial intelligence to detect. That's the AI model yeah. that we are, that we have right now. Okay. And I can show you the ONN model for this. I have this model and it's a basic ONN file. And if you look at, if you have a look over here, mm -hmm. it has oh. convolution models, okay. right? Yes, I got you. And it has a convolution model and it is, this is the job. This is the model, which is drawing all this inference, which is building all this inference in order to show the data. Okay. I know. Yes. Got it? Yes. Thank you. No, yes. Any doubts in implementing it? Yeah. Um, I think what we're yeah. asking is to show where, how you feed the neural net, how do you feed the input node of the network? How do I feed, how do I feed the input node to the network? Yes, okay, let me... You're just drawing, then it's uh -huh. where the, like the parameters for feeding the node. So feeding the okay, so, node. so where, where we have, where I'm feeding the input node, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, let me switch the screen so that I can show you the code. Okay, can you see my screen right now? Yes. A VS Code okay. screen. Yes, okay. Can you see the VS Code screen? Okay, now if I go to this area, okay. Now over here, what I'm trying to do over here, I have a start execute async method, which is running over here and it is taking a texture, right? It is taking an input texture which is going into Barracuda over here, that M Barracuda worker, which is taking this input texture. This is a texture file. See, this is where I'm in, I'm giving the data. This is the input node for testing. This is the input that is taking. 
Barracuda worker execute a synchronous task. And this, if you look into this, what is the implementation of it? Where is this function currently? What did, why, uh, like, where is it? So I can go over here and I can show you this execute async method, which is taking a texture 2D file and converting it into a te tensor input from converting into a tensor file and flattening it, then executing this async method, which I was telling you, worker.execute async will give you the input node. Did I answer your question? Yes. Okay. Uh, you have anything uh, like more? If you haven't understood, I can I can explain it again. Hello. Okay. Any more questions? Yeah. Wow. No, I think um, Hussein left us for a bit, so I think if there are no other questions um, and you're done. Or if you're not done, you can continue. Well, uh, basically, I I'm done, actually. Okay. I'm done, because that is the basic walkthrough of this project. I'm not sure whether my system will be helping me out if I start creating a new one. So... Uh, it's fine. We're also running out of time. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So it's, okay. He's back. He's back. He's saying he's back. So, uh, is there any other question? Um, yes. Um, come on, I have a question. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, it's on. Uh, I think uh, one is a question of capability. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. I'm considering. Um, I'm new to AI and I, mm -hmm. I'm kind of confused with some elements of it. Yes, but let's okay. say you have built a, a model. Mm -hmm. When you deploy it, probably an Android application. Mm -hmm. will, is, is, um, since Android is not as powerful as a PC, will it be able to function and yes. do the task smoothly? Yes. Now, right now, the Unity Barracuda supports uh, Windows, iOS, and Android platform. It is not supported in all the 25 different platforms that Unity support, and it's a very good question, Mushi. Thanks for asking that. Right now, it does support Android and as well. Now, in order to fine tune, in order to get the performance out of it, your model should be lightweight. And whenever you're trying to uh, like train a model outside of Unity, you can compute how much time it is taking in order to process one data, right? Yes. So taking a depending on that time, if it is below one second, that uh, then it is okay because uh, the person can wait for a second, but if it is more than three seconds in order to give you an output, well, again, if you if the Unity uh, app is running on top of it, obviously there will be a performance hit on that, right? So it will take a bit longer on that device to perform and to give the inference. But if your inference engine is fast, if your model is fast, if your AI model is fast, well, it won't take a very significant hit depending on the GUI, depending on the performance of your model. Right now, if you look into my Unity scene, I don't have anything. I just have a blank, empty, very bad looking UI for Unity. But right now it is giving me 500 uh, frames per second. If I go ahead and try to add some graphics and try to add some more, uh, like fine tune the graphics, make it like uh, super crisp, super shiny and super good, then I might uh, reduce the frame rate. I might get a hit on the frame rate. That will uh, give me around 25 to 60 frames per second if I go ahead and do that. But still, within 25 to 60 frames per second, if my uh, inference engine is not taking that much of it, well, it will be good to go. It's again the dependency on your inference engine. How good you have created your inference, not uh, from the side of Unity. Okay. Thanks. And uh, the, the last question I have is. Mm -hmm. What do you see is the potential for ML agents in uh, mm -hmm. game development? So, okay, ML agents is uh, ML agents and Unity Barracuda. These two are uh, basically you can say interrelated in terms of artificial intelligence, but these two have a complete different purpose. The ML agents has a purpose of creating and training the simulations that is inside the game, more for reinforcement learning, but. Uh, this same PyTorch can also be used for reinforcement learning. 
but if you are looking for something which is out of the box unity solution which does not require unity in order to train simulations by doing it well you can bring it with the nvidia uh, like nvidia clusters you can go ahead uh, completely be flexible with your python code and then train and then get the model train it with unity uh, train it with any of the models that you want any of the libraries let it be coffee let it be tensorflow and let it be anything unity ml agents is currently stuck with tensorflow it does not support uh, if you want to use coffee or if you want to use thanos uh, it is not supporting that but if you want to use it well you can go ahead get a inference get a model use it with barracuda so this is almost the same thing but with a different taste you can see okay so uh, if i have to give an analogy for that that will be like a veg burger and a hamburger <laughs> both of them are burger but the taste is different okay